apologies, apologies, apologies. Uh, it's the first time I've missed a blog week in a little while, like a long time. <laughs> so I'm sorry about that for anyone who is eagerly awaiting last week's blog post. Um, but I am back on track. I have been investing a incredible amount of time and energy and so much love into uh, a new program connected growth so check that out on the website amandastarkingsley.com uh, in the work with me section it's a co-coaching program and it is like knock your socks off amazing all right so this week we're talking about kids chores um every family does this differently and there's no handbook on this parenting gig and even if there were we wouldn't all follow it so i'm just going to share some of my experience because i know there's a lot of families who are like what do other people do so here's what we do uh in our house the regular chores are quite minimal but the expectations are varied they're kind of all over the map uh, emptying the dishwasher is the girl's only regular job, and even <laughs> writing and reading that feels really silly. <laughs> but there are a lot of other chores that uh, they are asked to do as needed, like setting the table, helping with dinner, cleaning the bathroom, dusting, window cleaning, car cleaning, yard work, and daily pickup of things that they've dispersed around the house. So they kind of cover the full round of things that get done around the house. Um, I'm trying to think of a chore that they don't really participate in, and they do. It's just that it's not like a regular thing. The dishwasher is the only regular thing. Uh, and for now, that works with us. Um, in terms of room cleaning, this is an interesting one, and they are on three different expectations here. Like we have, um, it's set up differently for each one of them. Our 13 year old is really good at knowing when her room is in need of pickup and she gets full decision making on her room cleaning. Uh, there's been very few times where I've said, hey, Liv, you should clean your room because she's she's super on it. She just knows her boundary and her limit and she gets it back to order and it gets a little messy and gets it back to order, sort of like me. <laughs> Our 11 year old, however, is terrible at knowing when to clean her room. I am not even sure she sees the mess. So we figured out that the best approach is to make Wednesday room cleaning day. So every Wednesday she knows she has to clean her room. The consequence of that is um, play dates and screens, but that hasn't even come up in a long time because we just know that Wednesday's room cleaning day. And uh, my husband thought of this rule and since we instituted it we've really eliminated a ton of arguing with her about her room and our four-year-old who has been known to do an amazing job cleaning his room even better than his 11 year old sister um he, he's good at it but honestly most of the time it's me who still picks up in there he, we're not really at a point where room cleaning is much of his chore uh, so the bottom line for us in our family is this. We make sure that everyone's contributing. We remain, remain flexible to individual schedules and social lives. They're in three different sports and all kinds of activities that really make uh, scheduling kind of wacky. So um, that's variable. We never cave to cleaning tantrums. So. Um, one of my children in particular seems to get hungry every time it's time to clean her room. Um, or sometimes the four-year-old will refuse to do pickup, but we don't cave to the tantrums. That does not happen. Um, we don't let it get so bad that everyone's freaking out. And that's why the room cleaning on Wednesday really became a thing because that prevented it from getting so bad that everyone's um, energy just got wacky. And most importantly, we model the behavior that we want them to follow. So our house does get messy, and then it gets picked up, and then it gets messy, and then it gets picked up. Um, is that ideal? No, but it's, it, it's okay. Like, I'm not expecting anything of them that, um, that we don't do ourselves. So they follow what we, the path that we pave. 
In terms of allowance, we have never had one in 14 years of parenting and I have no plans of starting. I don't want them to think that cleaning comes with any reward other than a home and a family that feels taken care of. Uh, the biggest source of income earning for our kids, um, because we don't have any kind of allowance, has been childcare. So pretty much when they were, as they became old enough to want to want or desire money, we were able to pay them for watching each other, if that makes sense. Like my oldest daughter was able to watch her sister and now both of them are able to watch their brother. Um, and so we don't pay them for helping walk, take care of each other unless we are doing something that we are receiving pay for. So for instance, um, sorry, my dog is at the door. In terms of like, we have a school conference or a meeting to go to, or we're grabbing groceries, uh, they do help with each, taking care of each other um, once they got old enough, but um, that's not a paid thing. If we need help because I want to do some work, some coaching calls, or um, my husband wants to blow glass, um, that's when we bring the, <laughs> stepping outside to let the dog in so she doesn't keep barking um that's when we stepped into paying them and allowing them a way to make money um my kids both also have worked for their grandfather um around his house uh, to make money so we don't have that allowance gig we kind of keep income earning in a different playing field so I'm curious, what does your family do? Please share in social media, share in the comments of this blog. I think it's interesting for us all to see how we do it differently. There's no one right way, but here's a look at how I make peace with a common and frustrating chore thought. Um, I walk through the process of thought, question, action. And so the thought that's really common for me and for a lot of people is, why am I doing so much of the work around here? I actually said this this morning. I came downstairs and there were a lot of dishes on the counter. I was like, why does it feel like I'm the only one who does dishes? Um, so it was just a moment, um, but that's a really common thought. And um, so the next question I ask is, who does this thought belong to? And it definitely belongs to me, but it's also this age old story of motherhood and caretaking and um, what that means. So it, you know, it's kind of just a lingering story out there. And then I ask, what purpose does a thought serve? And it doesn't really serve any. It kind of just puts me into victim mode. When I think, why am I the one doing so much of the work? I kind of drop into victim mode and it's not a good place to be. Um, so I ask, when am I ready to release the thought? And the answer is now. I don't, it's not a thought I have any interest in keeping. Um, where do I need to put the thought next and somewhere that I hope to never see it again? That question can be funny, but sometimes it serves me really well. Um, why am I giving this thought power? It, it's in, this is an interesting question. This was interesting for me to answer. And it, I give it power because it sort of glorifies all that I do in this weird and twisted way. It's like <laughs> going into victim mode of being the one who's cleaning all the time also goes into this sort of like glorification that's really wacky. So that was an interesting question to answer. And then I move on to my why and I say, how can my why and or purpose lead me to my next action? And my why is growth, my why word is growth. And growth asks me to engage everyone else in helping, right? So when I get to that point where it's like, why is it just me? It's, that's the time to engage everyone else and ask for the help that I need. And that's not just for my peace of mind, but for their growth and development as well. And uh, growth also reminds me that, I, that I'm only a victim if I choose to be, right? There's nothing empowering about being a victim. Um, so I get to choose whether or not I want to be that. Uh, growth says, this choice is up to you. Like, how do you want your home to feel and what are you willing to do about it? Um, so that's how I do some of the work. 
around kids chores and picking up and my responsibility. And I would love to hear from you. What is it like for you? Program. You can find the link to that on the website. You can also listen to our co-hosted podcast, Creating Wealth and Wellness, free on iTunes or here on the website. And if you're interested in building residual income, check out the Join Our Networking Family link. Until next time, keep doing that thought work. I believe in you.